Have you ever wondered how many storms the ocean sees in an average year? It's a fascinating question, and the answer might astound you. Every year the world experiences an average of nearly 2,000 thunderstorms a day. Yes, you heard it right, 2,000 a day. The vastness of our oceans makes them the perfect stage for these dramatic weather events. But how do we track and count these storms? Well, meteorologists employ a combination of satellite imagery, radar technology and direct measurement to keep tabs on the storm activity across the globe. Storms are classified based on their severity and location, and each one is carefully monitored to track its path and potential impact. Now, not all oceans are created equal when it comes to storm activity. The Pacific Ocean, the largest and deepest of the world's oceans, sees the highest number of storms each year. This is largely due to its size and the presence of the equatorial Pacific warm pool, a large swath of warm ocean water that fuels storm development. In contrast, the Arctic Ocean, the smallest and shallowest, sees the fewest storms. Its cold temperatures and ice cover inhibit storm formation. But it's not just about size or location. Ocean currents, wind patterns, and even the shape of the seafloor can influence where and when storms occur. But what about the Atlantic, the Indian, or the Southern Oceans? Well, the Atlantic Ocean is infamous for its hurricane season, which runs from June to November. The Indian Ocean also has its share of cyclones, especially in its northern region. The Southern Ocean, encircling Antarctica, experiences intense storms but fewer in number due to its remote, cold location. So, as you can see, our oceans are a hotbed of storm activity. From gentle rain showers to raging hurricanes, the vast open waters of our planet are constantly in motion, stirred by the ceaseless energy of the weather above. So, the ocean sees a surprisingly large amount of storm activity every year. But it's not just about the number. How severe can these ocean storms get? Well, to gauge the severity of ocean storms, meteorologists typically use the Saffir-Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale, a 1 to 5 rating scale based on a hurricane's sustained wind speed. This scale estimates potential property damage with Category 1 being the least destructive and Category 5 the most catastrophic. Now, let's delve into history a bit. The most severe storms recorded in history have been Category 5 hurricanes, like Hurricane Patricia in 2015, which had maximum sustained winds of up to 215 miles per hour. These storms are incredibly destructive, causing widespread devastation and loss of life. But, of course, the severity of an ocean storm isn't only about human impact. It's also about the toll these storms take on marine life. Severe storms can drastically alter marine ecosystems. Coral reefs, for instance, can be severely damaged or even destroyed by strong storm waves and high winds. This isn't just bad news for the corals, but also for the myriad of species that rely on them for food and shelter. And then there's the impact on human activities. Severe storms can halt shipping routes, disrupt fishing activities, and pose a serious threat to offshore oil and gas production. And let's not forget about the devastating effects of storm surges on coastal communities. But remember, it's not all doom and gloom. Ocean storms also play a crucial role in distributing heat around the planet, helping to regulate our climate. So while they can be destructive, they're also an essential part of our planet's natural processes. As you can see, the severity of an ocean storm can vary greatly, but they all have a significant impact. Now that we know about the frequency and severity, what causes these ocean storms? Storms in the ocean or marine storms are primarily caused by significant differences in temperature between the ocean surface and the atmosphere above it. Warm, moist air rises, creating a low-pressure system. As the surrounding high-pressure air rushes in to fill the void, it swirls, forming a cyclonic storm. But there's more to it than just that. The Earth's rotation and wind direction also play a crucial role. The Coriolis effect caused by the Earth's rotation causes the wind to curve, forming a circular storm pattern. Now let's talk about a hot topic, climate change. As our planet heats up, so do our oceans. Warmer ocean temperatures mean more energy to fuel these storms, leading to more intense and potentially more frequent storms. Rising sea levels, another impact of climate change, can exacerbate storm surges, causing more coastal flooding. So, in a nutshell, while the formation of ocean storms is a natural process, human-induced climate change is amplifying their intensity and effects. The repercussions of these storms are far-reaching, impacting not just marine life, but also coastal communities and economies.
They can lead to catastrophic flooding, devastating erosion, and destruction of habitats and infrastructure. Understanding the cause of these storms is key to predicting and preparing for them. The more we learn, the better we can mitigate the damage and protect our planet and its inhabitants. And what about the waves? How high can they get during these storms? Let's dive into the world of monstrous waves, the giants of the sea that storms conjure up. During a typical ocean storm, waves can reach heights of 20 to 30 feet. That's about as tall as a three-story building. The wind force, its direction and duration, along with the depth and contours of the seafloor, all play a part in molding these liquid skyscrapers. Now let's talk about extremes. One of the highest waves ever recorded during a storm occurred in the North Atlantic, clocking in at an astounding 62 feet. That's roughly the height of a six-story building, a wave taller than many lighthouses designed to withstand the sea's fury. These towering waves are not just awe-inspiring, they're also incredibly dangerous. They can cause havoc for ships, leading to disastrous capsizes and loss of life. For coastal communities, high waves during storms, often amplified by storm surges, can lead to devastating floods and erosion, causing significant damage to property and infrastructure. These high waves also reshape the ocean floor, affecting marine ecosystems and influencing ocean currents, which in turn can impact our global climate. So next time you see a wave, remember, they can get much, much bigger during an ocean storm. So there you have it, a whirlwind tour of ocean storms. We've covered the frequency, showing that hundreds of storms whip across our oceans each year. We've delved into the severity, emphasizing that the fiercest storms often occur in the Atlantic. We've explored the causes, primarily wind and temperature differences, and the immense waves they generate, sometimes reaching heights of 50 feet or more. Remember, the ocean is a powerful force, and its storms are a testament to that power.